Hey, this is Jeff again, part two of building your own, uh, I guess, dual trim wheel. Um, so basically in the last video we discussed all the tools that you'll need to make this project happen and basics of how I just laid everything out and kind of why I laid things out where they are. But to finish off with uh, where I left off is I was using roller blade bearings that snap in to this little compartment that I made um, for you know, the, your, your trim wheel rod to pass through. And basically this is about a 7 8 inch diameter. I drilled it a quarter inch deep just so that the roller blade bearing sits nice and flush in the compartment like that. And then that one's going to slip into there like so. And then that will sit in there. It will go into the grommet. And uh, same thing on the other side. Um, so basically these recesses again can be done on a small drill press. Harbor Freight actually sells a nice one for about 60 bucks. It's a uh, multi-speed. It's actually come in really handy on a lot of flight sim projects. Great tool to have if you uh, want to spend the extra money to pick one up. I highly recommend it. You can always use a cordless drill, but to hold a cordless drill more steady, you know, sometimes you can get off a little bit. Um, definitely will work if you've got a steady hand, but I highly recommend a small drill press. Um, so basically, you know, each side of these is going to house a bearing like so, and like so. And then the flaps over here my speed brake lever is actually going to go over there and so these sit like this this will sit in here will go through the hole and then on each side of this you're going to have to drill is once you've got these in here and have got done a test fit you want to position your rod so that you have equal amount of overhang on each side um, obviously I would test these with the rod coming through the roller blade bearings and then basically what I did is I'm using two 16 inch thick nylon washers. They've got a quarter inch hole in the middle and they're about oh, 7 eighths maybe an inch in complete diameter. And those get sandwiched up the outside on the outside of the uh, rod here and then just past that is actually another hole in which I will uh, drill a hole all the way through using my smallest drill bit 332nd you know, really small, just enough to get cotter pins through. So something else you probably want to pick up at Home Depot or maybe even Harbor Freight. This is uh, about an inch, inch and a quarter cotter pin. Looks like almost like a little hairpin. And then that actually goes through that little hole that we will drill. And again, drilling these holes is going to be difficult uh, to do with a cordless drill. Can be done. Uh, make sure you got your fingers out of the way because it can be slippery. Yeah, but it's obviously best suited for a small drill press if you can get one. Uh, maybe uncle's got one, maybe a friend's got one. Um, so basically once you've done the test fit with the bearings and everything's fitting through and nice, um, I have an old printer around that I decided to take apart and use parts out of. Old printers great for getting gears out of, little pieces of small, you know, 24 to 26 gauge uh, wiring out of. And basically I was looking for gears, some plastic gears, because I want my trim wheel and the potentiometer to uh, interact in a certain manner. And basically what I determined is, is that I wanted my trim wheel to be able to make two complete revolutions for the one revolution that the potentiometer is allowed to travel. That way it gets a little bit more realistic uh, turning. So you got to turn your trim wheel a couple times, you know, full two circles before uh, it would actually stop, or rather one full circle in a nose up trim and then one circle forward for nose down trim. Um, and so to do that you want to look for a gear ratio of two to one, meaning your potentiometer needs the largest gear and the gear that's going to go on your trim wheel shaft needs to be the smallest gear. So I looked for a gear that I knew would have enough clearance. Um, it's going to sit about an eighth inch off the bottom of my pan. Um, just barely hits the top of the pan so when I mount this I'm going to use some rubber bushings around the outside to raise it up just a little bit so I make sure I've got enough clearance but basically the deal is is you want to first lay these two gears out flat on a table and then measure the distance from this gear to the center of that one and then that's how far away you know that the center of your gear potentiometer for the trim needs to sit away from the shaft and then based on that dimension once the rod is, is sitting in there you know this is where my trim wheel is going to sit, is that it will mesh up. And so they will, you know, you want them to sit tight so they, they, they fit together nice and tight, um, like so, so that when the uh, rod actuates the trim, it works just like that. And so that's what I did. And using, again, my drill press and a Forstner bit, 
I drilled that out enough first just so that the potentiometer will sit in there nicely. I'm going to hot glue this in, basically get the glue good and hot, squirt a nice dollop in there, and while it's still hot, I'm going to quickly press that down and then hold it for about 20 seconds until that glue sets. And then once that's done, I will then re-screw that in, slide this gear on, we'll then feed that through this side, feed that through that side, and then screw the gear and rod assembly down into the uh, pan. At the same time, I'm also going to glue up my uh, speed brake lever. And I made this, I purchased a 100K ohm potentiometer, that's what you want uh, for both of these. Uh, as far as potentiometers go, it's called they're called 100K linear. Very important. Um, this is my speed brake lever, and as you can see, it now actuates the uh, rod coming out of the potentiometer. I made this out of some 0.100 uh, stock 6061 aluminum that I had. You could use wood if you wanted. Uh, maybe you've got some other metal laying around that's already kind of shaped like this. Uh, but basically, I had to cut this out using my 4-inch grinder. Again, dangerous tool. Uh, it can be purchased at uh, Home, uh, Home Depot, probably 30, 40 bucks. You can get one cheaper at Harbor Freight for under 20. Um, you want to use a fresh blade so that it cuts nice and smooth. And when you're cutting, you want to do it really slowly so it doesn't kick back and cut all your fingers off. Definitely not something you want to have happen. Um, it will kind of ruin your day, if not the week. So basically after I cut this out of aluminum, I also made a piece of uh, wood that's approximately 3 8 inch, you can use 1 quarter inch, that's fine. Made it in kind of a half a lemon wedge shape. Um, drilled a quarter inch hole right through the middle and then drilled three more holes in a triangle around it. And basically these little holes are using the bolts, which are the number 4-40 by 3 quarter inch bolts, that then bolt your lever actually to the actuating assembly. Um, works really great. First you also want to use the, your smallest drill bit um, once you drill the quarter inch hole, uh, drill a hole through the top going all the way through and that's going to be your set pin and that's what's going to grab the dial here. Um, and you same thing, you want to drill a small set hole actually through the aluminum rod of your potentiometer so that this screw goes down into the aluminum a little bit and thereby grabs it. And then once you have that set, you can then bolt um, this to this. Now a really important factor here is because this has play in it, you want to find out where the exact middle of that play from there to there is. Usually the, these potentiometers are about 270 degrees of travel. So what's really important is before you put all this on, you want to turn the potentiometer all the way to one direction. You want to use that little metal scribe I was telling you about that I said to buy at Harbor Freight and you mark it. So move it till it stops, mark it on the shaft and mark on the potentiometer where it stops. Then move it all the way to the other direction. Notice where your scribe line is that you first scribe on the shaft and then mark again on the potentiometer where it comes down. And so now you see the distance between those two marks um, where there's your, your dead zone where, or where the potentiometer actually does not travel. And so you know that the midpoint of that and then on the opposite side is actually the middle of travel. And on that rotation you want to move your scribe point back to that middle point. Okay, and then look down, come out whatever distance that you need to, in my case it was 3 eighths of an inch, and then you drill the hole straight down through your aluminum uh, once you know where that exact midpoint is on the rotational dial. It's very important so that when your potentiometer is sitting in there it's, it's, and sitting up straight up like that, that's the exact midpoint so you get good travel in either direction for which to actuate. Uh, very important, very, very important. Um, same thing, when you set this gear in place to the gear that's on the rod, you want to make sure that when you position that gear uh, up against the small gear, that it too, you have a little black dot, you want to mark here and then on there where your center point is. And so that when you first put that together, that it's going to be exactly in the center point so that you know you'll be able to get one rotation backwards and one rotation forward. Um, very, very important. So um, in the next step, we're going to show you how to wire this stuff up, and then uh, we will move on to the assembly. Thanks for watching, and uh, I guess we'll see you now in part three. Bye.